I'm Christina Warren. And I'm Adrian Hall. And welcome to The Open Source Show. I'm Christina Warren, Senior Cloud Developer Advocate, and I'm joined today by... Adrian Hall, Technical Evangelist at Datastax. So what is Datastax? So Datastax is a company that has a Cassandra solution that extends Cassandra with graph, analytics, and search, and also provides operational tools and things like that to help you do more with your distributed database implementation. Okay, and so Cassandra is a uh, distributed NoSQL database solution, right? That is correct. And it's open source. It is open source. It's also, yes. happy birthday time, <laughs> 10 years old. 10 years old. So happy birthday, Cassandra. So let's back up a little bit because we're talking about demystifying distributed systems. Yeah. So how would you define what a distributed system is? A lot of things are called distributed systems. Sometimes you might have two laptops on a desk, like which stands right in front of us, and someone may call it a distributed system. We're talking about something that's much more extensive. Uh, in, it could be multi-regional or multi-cloud and have thousands and thousands of computers in the system. But beyond that, whenever I'm talking about distributed systems, is an intelligent system that can manage itself with outages and things like that and not lose data. Okay. Um, another system that's really popular today that's also a very resilient distributed system like that is Kubernetes. Very so, popular. Yeah. It's so like a podcast. node goes down and you, know, you don't always really notice because it knows how to return a node to activity or to make a new one or whatever it needs to do. Same thing with Cassandra. Like we lose a node, it rebalances the data within the distributed database. And whenever we can resume that node or, or fix it or b put a new one in there, then it can rebalance the data. Instead of having to run everything on one server, you're distributing the tasks, hence right. the name, on a bunch of different machines. And like you said, they could be in different regions, they could be on different clouds, um, they could you know, have different specifications. Let's talk a little bit about, because we're about to get into a demo, but let's talk a little bit about what are some of the challenges that you see people have when they, when they approach distributed systems? There's a long list. Um, <laughs> a, a lot of it comes just from the operational side of things. Uh, a lot of that's starting to be simplified a little bit more and more as different projects get more mature. One of the things that we do at Datastax is we, we simplify the management of Cassandra. Like you have all the nodes, but we have operational software to help you see what's actually happening. Like you can actually see your, your data centers and know what the status of those are, um, instead of always having to like bounce into a terminal. But at this point, we're starting to see a lot more in the industry where the distributed systems are getting to point that they can be managed, and it's more, how are you gonna actually write your applications to that system? Okay. You need to figure out how you, you're gonna deal with caching and how you're gonna connect to the distributed database. Like the distributed database has its tier kind of figured out. Well, there's a lot of ways to make the applications more resilient in Kubernetes or in whatever you're doing on top of that distributed database or across those clouds that the distributed database exists in. So really it's a lot about the architecture, mm -hmm. uh, I guess, side of, of planning what, what you're doing. Architecture is it's definitely a situation where you need to kind of figure out what you're going to do, but you, you don't just jump in and go, I want 50,000 nodes and I'm going to put some data in it. That's probably not the best approach. Yeah, you need to come up with an architecture and get an idea around like how big of a database you need, like how, how many nodes you're going to have, how much actual storage you're probably going to need or you project yourself to need. There's also the strategic side of that Okay. where you might have your database in one cloud and say, oh, wait, we need to have that multi-cloud. But then you still need to definitely make sure like how am I going to run my application on that? For instance, I could probably show you that if you wanted me to. Uh, you know what? That would be great. I, I would love for you to show me that. It might take four hours. No, I'm kidding. It won't take four hours. Like two it minutes. takes four hours. Th like people aren't going to show it. Two right. minutes? Yeah, two, two minutes. minutes. Two minutes? minutes. Y'all going to watch? All right, cool. It. Let's do it. All right. So here's the demo I'm going to show you. It's more of a kind of quick walkthrough and how to get started. But here's what you can end up with if you want to go multi-cloud. Like I was talking about a minute ago, the multi-cloud capabilities of Cassandra and especially Datastax Enterprise are pretty extensive. Right here, one of my cohort, Justin, has set up a cluster. Inside of that are three specific data centers, one in AWS, one in Azure, and one in GCE. And if I click on any of those, you can see that there's a three ring cluster in each of those. So and this all works as one single database. So we have nine nodes or nine servers that have a distributed database store across all of those. Now, if we click on Ops Center Monitoring, we get some great insight into 
those individual nodes and everything. You can see one of them actually is down for service right now in GCE. If I come over to say, let's, let's restart one in Azure. Let's say I needed to restart this particular node for some reason. I can come in and just click start or stop or restart as I need to. I'm going to go ahead and click restart. I'm sure no one will, no one will even blink because it's a distributed database, right? So that node is actually restarting, and this will update in a second, and you'll see that there's one down, et cetera. And other information in this particular dashboard is super useful to managing and keeping all your various data centers and other nodes up and live or getting some insight into what's going on. Like right now, you can see that this has started its restart process. Um, it's waiting to start. If I click on it, you can see all the information. And of course, you can get various stats and other things. So this is great. I have this multi-cloud setup, but how do I get started if I just want to do some development like on a local machine, right? So I wrote this blog entry called a collection of links and tour of the Docker images that we've created at Datastax. The two key things that I want right now just to show you how quick you can get started is we'll take a look at the Docker Hub and the actual GitHub repo where we have some sample Docker Compose files to help you get started. So there's the three images that we have. There's the server, which is what makes up the individual nodes of the database cluster, and then Op Center and Studio. Studio is for writing SQL queries and things like that against the cluster, and Op Center is for management and things like we just looked at with the multi-cloud setup. And the repo over here is just called Docker Images, and it has various sample things set up. I'm going to actually pull that and open up a terminal. There we go. And then I'm just going to make a directory, call it getting started, navigate into that, and then I'm going to clone that repo. Once I have that repo cloned, I can navigate into the directory called example compose YAMLs. And you'll see there's a couple YAML files for Docker Compose around starting Op Center Studio and the one that's just called Docker Compose is for the nodes. So if I wanted to actually start a cluster right now with Docker Compose to run the containers, all I have to type in is Docker Compose, pass it a file. So I'll pass in the Docker Compose YAML file, then up to start it, dash D to do it headless so that it just runs it in the background. And then I'm going to scale it to two nodes. Now, when I hit enter, Docker Compose will look at that, read the YAML file that it was passed, and figure out how to build out a three node cluster. So I said scale to two because it always has to start a seed node to get something started. Then it adds the two nodes to it. And there we go. I now have a three node Datastax Enterprise Cassandra cluster up and running. That's how quick and easy it is. Well, that was awesome. We were talking about some of the reasons you would use a distributed system right. and the history of, of Cassandra. Can you maybe talk about reasons why you would not use a distributed system? Let's say you're going to have 10 people using an application, and I don't know, maybe you're only going to have five gigabytes of data, something that could literally fit on a laptop today. Right. You don't need to go to building out a full distributed system for that. But when you start to move to a scale where you might have thousands or millions or billions of users, there are billions of us around, you, you need to start figuring out how the resources are going to be allocated and what you can use to have that scale. And that's where distributed systems come into play, is when you're starting to move up that scale range and you need to have the option of like, where is our forward path? Like, how do we grow into 10 petabytes, 50 petabytes, or the next level even beyond that? Like, that's when you need to move into that space. So if you're building an app that has lots of users, is storing lots of data, that's probably a good reason to use a distributed system. Yep. But if you've got something that's smaller, that doesn't have a lot of users, right. you don't necessarily need to, it's probably better if you don't go in that direction. Right. And, and there's other things too. Like sometimes you just, you just want to have a super resilient system. Maybe you only want to put your 50 records of data in there, but you want to have it just crazily reliable for the zombie apocalypse. Distributed systems, get okay. you one. All right, so, that, so. That, that's what you want if like you want... It's total security. Absolutely. All right. So if people are wanting to get started and mm -hmm. both building their own systems, getting started with Cassandra, getting started with the kind of the theory with distributed systems, do you have any uh, places where they can go to to? to I do. 
Awesome. Amazingly. And I've read a lot of these, so they're good sources. Okay. One of the first ones I take a dive into is Data Stacks Academy material. It's a free account, free material, lots of different courses to look into architecture, how to build applications around it, how it's working when your application is working against it and putting data in it and how the data flows in and out and all that kind of jazz. Also, just check out the apache.cassandra.org uh, domain. There's a lot of good stuff there to get you started, just jumping into Cassandra itself. Of course, there's my blog, compositecode.blog, not com, but dot .blog. Very nice um, uh, TLD. Yeah, yeah, I, just, I saw that and I was like, oh, yeah, I'm going to own that for 50 years. So there it is. Got a lot of material on there, and I write about the whole spectrum of Super academic to super straightforward, high-level stuff awesome. on distributed systems. And you can check out all the links that Adrian mentioned, his blog, some other resources, as well as the Data Stacks Academy in the show notes down below. And, of course, you can also check out opensource.microsoft.com to get more information about all the cool open source stuff we're doing. And let us know in the comments if you've got any questions. And if you like this video, and of course you do because... Adrian's yeah. here and I'm here. That's right. You want to you wanna like and subscribe on, uh, on YouTube right. and turn on those uh, notifications and get access to get notified all the times we upload new stuff. So uh, thanks, Adrian, for joining me. We'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.